Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. Come on, Porky. Reel in. We're moving. Porky. I got one, Jeff. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I lost him. It's because he didn't keep his head up. Well, how can I keep his head up when mine was down? Well, he felt like a whale. Maybe I can hook him again. No. Come on, we're moving. Why? There's a big fish out there. You saw the way he bit. That wasn't any fish. That was me. I hit your pole while you were sleeping. Big joke. Ha, ha, ha. Well, it's pretty funny when you did that backflip. You got a sense of humor like a sour apple. Oh, don't be a sore head. Put on your sneaker and let's go. Some people think they're real smart. They're not as smart as some people think they are. I want to try that place in front of the Dorsey Cottage before the sun hits it. Do you know how many places we've tried already? Six, and we didn't even get a nibble. Well, that deep hole over there is a perfect spot. I know it is. Who said so? Well, Gramps once caught a big bass over there. Well, Jim Teal once caught a baby deer in his barn, but that doesn't mean that the barn was full of baby deer, does it? What's one thing got to do with the other? Now, will you finish lacing up your sneaker? All right. Fish are dopey anyway. You gotta be dopey to eat worms. I could be starving to death and I wouldn't eat a worm. You would if you were a fish. Well, come on. What's that noise? I don't know. Here. Do you hear me? Get him out immediately. Oh, it's not a him, it's a her. She won't hurt anybody. Don't give me any back talk, young man. What are you doing here? Well, we just came to go fishing, ma'am. Well, you're not going to fish around here. I rented this cottage for the summer, and I am having enough trouble without being bothered with screaming boys and vicious dogs. Lassie's not vicious. And we're not screaming. Boys always scream. And I saw your dog about to attack Rembrandt. Did the big, nasty dog try to hurt my precious itty-bitty? Why, he's trembling. He's so frightened. Now you get that animal out of here and be quick about it. And don't come back, either. You mean we can't fish here? That's exactly what I mean. Nobody's ever stopped anybody from fishing at the lake. Young man, I don't propose to stand here and argue with you. Unless you leave immediately, I'm going to call the police. There is no police around here. There's the constable and the sheriff. You're a fresh, impertinent little boy. And if I were your mother, I'd spank you good. Well, she does. Plenty of times. Hmm. Are you going, or are you not? Well... My name is I Jeff. don't care what your name is. Well, we live over there. And I don't care where you live. Now go before I lose my temper. Poor little bitty Rembrandt. It's a bad old dog. Boy, she had a broom, she could be a witch. She sure could. <laughs> Oh, 
What are we going to do? You mean to say that we can't fish in front of the Dorsey Cottage all summer? Oh, I didn't say it. She said it. It's one of the best places, too. Well, we could bring down the cottage. I know. We could tell her that there's a man-eating shark in the lake. And he's 200 feet tall, and he's got six eyes and teeth this big. Well, have you got any ideas? No, but maybe we'll think of something on the way home. Come on. I still think the man-eating shark was the best idea. Everyone's afraid of sharks. She wouldn't believe it. Fish for supper tonight? Oh, no luck, huh? Well, we got chased. And the lady living in the Dorsey cottage said we couldn't fish there. Miss Chapin? Is that her name? She's an artist from the city. Jenny was telling me about her. She rented the Dorsey house for the summer. Yeah, that's what she said. Well, why wouldn't she let you fish there? She said we were screaming. Yeah, we weren't at all. And she said Lassie was attacking her dog. Oh, does she have a dog? Mm, you can call it a dog if you like. It's about that big. <laughs> well, maybe I can smooth things down for you. I'll drop over and pay her a visit tomorrow. Porky, you look hungry. No, I'm always hungry. Well, would a piece of chocolate cake and a glass of milk help some? Boy, it sure would. <laughs> Come on. Why does she have to be such a drip? Who? Miss Chapin. What's a drip? An icky, a twerf. Oh, oh, that explains it. You know, a pain in the neck. Exactly, just like my cousin Tony from Chicago. I mean, he's a super drip. Why, Mom? Why what, dear? Why does she have to be such a drip? Well, living alone might make her cross and irritable at times. Older people sometimes get that way when they don't have companions near their own age. Even Grant sacks up every once in a while, and, and he has us. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. I'm sure everything will be all right once we get to meet her. I've got an idea. What? Outside. You didn't finish your cake. I've got enough. You heard what Mom said about how older people get cross on account of they don't have companions their own age? So if Miss Chapin's cross on account of being lonesome, and Gramps is cross on account of the same thing, if they were companions, nobody would be cross. So what's your idea? So we have to get them to be companions. Who, oh, her and your Gramps? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're crazy. Your Gramps would have conniptions. Not if we worked it right. First, I think Gramps ought to send her a present. Why should he send her a present? Not him, us. We'll send it and make out like it came from him. Then what? Well, then he ought to get a present from her. Well, here she goes through a lot of trouble just for a little fishing. I gotta figure out what to send her for grass. Well, you gonna eat your apple? No. You figure and I'll eat. Doggone, a man can't even get a cup of coffee in his own home. One thing after another. You work like a dog all your life for people, and then when you ask them to do anything for you, they, they're never around what to do it. What are you it. muttering about now? Oh, yes. I'll pick it up for you. I ain't too old to pick up after myself. Now, now, nobody said you were. All I wanted was a cup of coffee. In the middle of the morning? Well, ain't no law against it, is there? Well, of course not. Just I've never known you to take a coffee break before. Well, a man's got to do something with his spare time. Oh, is your work all done? Been through for an hour, and I can't sit around here twiddling my thumbs. You busy and Jeff busy. Well, why don't you drive over to Matt's and have a game of checkers? Well, Matt's plowing, he ain't got no time for checkers. Never mind, I'll go out and sit in the sun and whittle like the other old men. You'll do nothing of this sort. Now, come on over here. Sit down. I'll make some fresh coffee. We'll both have a cup. Hmm? You know, I still think you're batty giving her her. It's the best thing I got outside of Lassie. Yeah, I know. That's why I think you're batty. Yeah. Well, what's she gonna do with a trained bullfrog? 
I don't know. What's anybody going to do with it? I don't know. Herman's the only trained bullfrog in the whole county. Yeah, I know. Um... Now, what should I write? From Graham Smiller to Miss Chapin. Should I put with love? Why should he love her? He don't even know her. I guess you're right. There, yeah, that's okay. Put Herman in the box. So long, Herman. Oh, here. Poor Herman. Are you sure you don't want to give her something else, Jeff? Like what? Oh, listen to him. He knows you're going to give him away. Come on. What are you going to do? Just leave that on the porch? No, I'll let Lassie deliver it. That way she'll get to like Lassie, too. Mm -hmm. I just hope you know what you're doing. Jeff, would you pick a couple of tomatoes for supper? Can I do it when I come back? Well, when will that be and where are you going? Just to take a present over to Miss Chapin's. We'll be right back. Oh, I think that's very nice, dear. All right, you go ahead. See? Even Mom thinks it's a good idea. Well, I just hope so. See anybody? <laughs> She's probably in the house then. Lassie, take this up to the porch. Take it up to the door. Come on. Lassie. Pour it on her face. 
face. Who, me? She's coming, too. Well, we'd better beat her. Uh, have you got her in my hand, my pocket? Hmm, but a picture of what? No, I don't know. Something. Well, look, I got an idea. What, another one? No, this one's okay. All we gotta do is take the picture, give it to Gramps, and say Miss Chapin sent it. That'd be a lie. Well, we don't have to say she sent it then. We'll just say she painted it. That wouldn't be a lie. So? So then Gramps will have to come up and thank her for it, and everything will be okay. Hmm, maybe. Well, we can try anyway. What is it? It's a picture. Picture of what? And that's what I said. It's a surrealist painting. A what? Modern painting. It's not really supposed to be a picture, just an impression. Well, uh, which side is up? Well, I imagine that this is the way it goes. <laughs> that ain't no better. If you got to imagine, it ain't much of a picture. And I still think it was very nice of Miss Chapin to send it to you. She, uh, painted it. Well, it beats me what it is, and it beats me why she sent it to me. She painted it. I know that. I know that. Jeff and Porky got into a little trouble with Miss Chapin. Oh? Mm -hmm. About fishing in front of her house. But now that she's made this friendly gesture, well, I think it'd be nice if you walked up and had a little talk with her. But I don't even know the woman. That's just it. You should get to know her. Well, she's real nice, Gramps. Why don't you walk up with the boys? What's the matter, Porky? Oh, I got a kink in my neck. I think you ought to go up alone, Gramps. <laughs> no, nothing doing. You and Porky can go with Gramps. It'll be all right. Well, not me, Miss Miller. I, I gotta go home. So long. Porky! Look, Jeff, I really do. I gotta go. So long. Why don't you walk up with Jeff? I'll give you a blueberry pie to take to her. She's building a fire in the stove. Couldn't we just leave the pie and go? Oh, no, no, no. We'd never hear the last of it from your mom. Now we're here, we might just want to get it done with. What's that? Uh, her dog. Dog? Uh, Miss Chapin, I'm George Miller. This is my grandson, Jeff. Uh, we just come to pay your friend. You get out of here! Both of you, get out of here! Nasty stuff. It's probably poisoned. My goodness. Oh, that woman must be out of her mind. I ought to hail her into court. If she thinks she can assault people, she's got another thing coming. Come on. Gramps. What? Look. Look at what? Smoke. I don't see nothing. Coming out her window. Well, let her burn up. You can't do that. You're a volunteer fireman, remember? Now, come on. Well, I guess that's right. You wait here. Oh, no, Gramps. No, Lassie, no. Gramps! Gramps! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn, it was 
clothes, no fire, but plenty of smoke. <clears throat> Rembrandt? Where's Rembrandt? Rembrandt? Who's he? Her dog. Oh. He's in the house. Oh, he'll burn up. Somebody saved him. He'll burn up. <laughs> Take it easy. Lassie will get him out all right. Oh, I hope so. I don't know what I'd do without him. <laughs> My darling Rembrandt, he's safe. Oh, he's safe. My precious, itty-bitty Rembrandt. <laughs>